Hi, my name is Carlos. I teach cybersecurity, computer science, and quantum computing at the School of Computing at the University of Kent. And last weekend, I went to watch Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Here are my thoughts about the movie and how it touches upon some interesting concepts in science, like the multiverse. So I went to watch uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania last weekend. It was... Okay, my kids enjoyed it. My favorite part of the movie, by far, was Kang the Conqueror. Partly because of Jonathan Major's excellent portrayal of the character, and partly because Kang the Conqueror is just one of my favorite characters in comic books. He's not a mutant, he doesn't come from a different planet, and he wasn't bitten by a radioactive spider. All he is, is a really good scientist. And he defeats his foes using the power of science. And I really like that. Another reason I went to watch that movie was because of the word Quantumania in the title. Unfortunately, there wasn't a lot of science in that movie. There was, however, one really neat idea, the idea of the multiverse. To understand the multiverse, we must first understand Schrodinger's cat. Some people think that it's a cat that's either dead or alive, and we simply don't know which one it is until we open the box. But that's not it at all. See, the cat is in both states, dead and alive, or more precisely, it's in neither. To visualize this, we can use an XY plane. The X axis would represent a dead cat, the Y axis would represent an alive cat, and our Schrodinger's cat is in a diagonal, which is neither dead nor alive. We call this state a superposition. Superpositions are fragile though, and when we measure them, they collapse to either an alive cat or a dead cat. So where does the multiverse come from? To see that, we have to look at Schrodinger's cat a bit more precisely. We can start by looking at a single atom or a particle inside the box. We know that as long as we keep the box closed and we don't measure it, that particle can be in a superposition of incompatible states. For example, an electron can be in a superposition of a low and high energy state. When that electron interacts with other electrons, then those electrons don't measure the first one, rather they become entangled. And now they're all together in a superposition. Schrodinger comes along and notes that a cat is simply a collection of many atoms or many particles. So when the cat interacts with the atoms or particles in the box, now the cat is also in superposition. When a scientist comes along and opens the box and measures, then we create a collapse, and the cat collapses to either dead or alive, along with the atoms and particles. But what happens if we put a box around our scientist and the cat before they measure? No collapse happens. Rather, what happens is that the scientist is now in a superposition alongside the cat. But from the perspective of the scientist, nothing has changed. Or rather, I should say, from the perspectives of the scientist, nothing has changed. Because now there are two scientists. One scientist measured the cat being dead. Another scientist in superposition measured the cat being alive. But there's nothing in physics limiting the size of the box. In fact, we can make this box as big as the entire universe. So that when we measure the cat, we put the entire universe in superposition. Hence, many worlds or many universes in superposition. A multiverse. So there you have it. That's quantum theory in a nutshell. Now, it might not make a lot of intuitive sense to us humans, but it is a really successful theory. Richard Feynman, one of the greatest scientists of all times, described the accuracy of quantum theory, and I'm paraphrasing here, to be as accurate as measuring the distance between New York and Los Angeles to within the width of a human hair. So, that was my weekend. How was yours? Hopefully you can join us in the future for some other tidbits and opinions from your favorite quantum theorists.